Get ready for the dictation. Start. As the central legislative body in India, the parliament has four main roles. It makes laws. It holds the executive to account for its actions. It allocates government finances and represents the interests and aspirations of citizens. The parliament is also a constituent body in the sense that it can amend the constitution. Over the years, the parliament has been meeting for a fewer days. Figure 1 shows that the number of sitting days has declined from 125 to 140 in the 1950s to about 70 days in the last 20 years. Also, disruptions have further reduced the amount of time available for discussion in Parliament. During the period of the 15th Lok Sabha, one third of the scheduled time was lost to disruptions. As important casualty is question R. If the house is disrupted, it often sits late or through the lunch hour to make up for lost time. However, the time lost in question R is never made up. As a result, only a few questions listed for oral answers are actually answered on the floor and the rest get a written reply. The shortest of time has also affected discussion on bills. Every bill is expected to go through three readings at the stage of introduction consideration when there is a detailed discussion on each clause and passing. The parliament rarely discusses any bill at the first or third reading. Many bills are not discussed at the consideration stage either though the record has improved in the last five years there are some structural issues that need to be addressed to improve the effectiveness of parliament these include the repeal of the anti-defection law recording all votes on bills and major debates referring all bills to committees and strengthening the support system for committees. The 10th schedule of the constitution was added in 1985 through the 52nd amendment. In brief, it provides for the disqualification of an MP if he defects from his party or if he does not vote in accordance with the whip issued by his party. Effectively, this gives control to the party leadership over the votes of all its members. Any member who disobeys the party dictate would lose his seat and there would be by elections. It is our contention that the anti-defection law goes against the very concept of representative democracy. It has weakened the role of parliament as a body that scrutinizes legislative proposals and that oversees the functioning of the executive. As Burke explained in a famous speech, parliament is a deliberative assembly and that the parliamentarian owed his constituents not his industry only but his judgment. While introducing the draft constitution, Ambedkar discussed the differences between the presidential form and the 
parliamentary form of government he said that while the former provided greater stability the latter provided more accountability and that this was needed for a country like india he explained the accountability was done on a daily basis through questions resolutions no confidence motions adjournment motions and debates on addresses that is the key role of every member of the parliament is to exercise their judgment deliberate on issues ask questions of the government and hold the government to account the anti defection law negates this principle it reduces the role of the member to follow the instructions given by the party leader if a party has a majority in parliament this implies that there is no effective discussion on or challenge to a government bill or motion as members have no freedom to vote as per their judgment it takes away the incentive to invest time and resources in understanding the nuances of issues before making a decision it effectively converts parliament from a body that consists of thinking men and women to one controlled by a few party leaders stop